With Azure Boards, you can plan, track, and discuss your work across teams, connecting everything from ideas to releases. Let's see how we can get started with it. Hey, welcome back to Cardet Day, where we talk about DevOps, especially with GitHub and Azure DevOps. Today, I have for you an introduction to Azure Boards, and I will talk and I will cover uh, most general parts of the service. But let me know in the comment section below if you want me to go deeper in any specific area of Azure Boards, because I'm thinking to dedicate a series just to this awesome service. Also, as I promised already a while back, today I'm announcing a giveaway to celebrate the 5,000 subscribers to this channel. So keep watching to know all the rules and the price of the giveaway because you don't want to miss it. All right, let's get into Azure Boards. In this video, as I mentioned, we will see what Azure Board is and what makes it special, and also a brief view on how we can start creating and managing our projects with it. I also want to mention that while Azure Boards is of course part of Azure DevOps and therefore it works very well and it's fully integrated with the other services within Azure DevOps, it works just as well with many other systems like for example GitHub and also in a standalone way. And by the way, if you want to know how you can integrate Azure Boards with GitHub, check out the other video I made when you're done with this. You can find the link up here and in the video description. So what is Azure Boards? Well, in simple words, Azure Boards is a tool that allows you to plan, track, and organize the work within your team and your organization in a very easy and simple way. Azure Board is interactive and customizable and provides a rich set of capabilities, including native support for Agile, Scrum, and Kanban processes, calendar views, configurable dashboards, and integrated reporting. And all of these using a simple drag and drop interface directly in the browser. And on top of that, Azure Boards will let you filter by specific users or work content types, export data into calendars, plan your sprints, and even manually query your work items using a very powerful query language. But enough talking, let's see how we can get started and create our first project. Once you log in into Azure DevOps, if you don't have any other project, you will have a prompt that says create a project to get started. If instead other projects are present, like in this example, you can click on the New Project button in the top right, and the Create New Project dialog will open. In either cases, here you can specify a name for your project and provide a brief description for it. You'll then be given two options on the type of project you can create. Public visibility permits users anywhere on the internet to see your boards, and that's actually what the word public means. This is ideal for open source projects that may need collaborators that are not part of a unified group that requires authentication. While private visibility instead is just that, it allows you to lock your Azure DevOps and only permits those you choose to have access to it. This is great for all your enterprise and organizational projects, but of course also for your personal projects. Please note that public projects are disabled by default uh, for security reasons and can be enabled in the organization settings. Clicking then on Advanced, you can select the type of source control you want your project to use, but I will leave this to another time since it's not relevant to Azure Boards. But what is very relevant instead is the selection of the process type. As mentioned before, Azure Boards support a variety of processes out of the box like Agile, Basic, CMMI, and Scrum. And in this example, you can also see another process called Custom Scrum. And as the name says, this is a custom process type I created. Azure Board, in fact, allows you to fully customize your process templates to basically make them fit your organization and your processes. And once you're done with the selection of the process template, just click on Create, and your projects will be live in just a few seconds. If you want to discover more about the different process templates and how to pick the right one for you, Check out this video over here when you're done with this one, and you can find a link in the video description as well. Before we move on to explore more about Azure Boards, two more things. First one, hit the like button below if you're enjoying this video or you find it insightful. This will not only let this video to be recommended to more viewers and so they can benefit from it, but of course it would mean a lot to me. Thank you. And second, it's time to talk about the giveaway. All you have to do to participate in the giveaway is subscribe to this channel, leave a like to this video and head over to coderdave.io slash newsletter and join the newsletter for free. After one week from the published date of this video, I will randomly select the winner from the list of people that have followed the procedure and subscribed into the newsletter. The winner will be notified by email and also will be announced in one of the future videos. And you want to know what the price is? Well, it's a 50 US dollars worth of swag from the dev shop. 
I will provide you with a coupon that you can use on the platform to buy basically anything you want and it's worth as I mentioned 50 US dollars but please note that the shipping is not covered by the coupon so you will need to cover that yourself. So once again to win the prize of this giveaway subscribe to this channel leave a like to this video and head over to codedev.io slash newsletter to join the free newsletter. But let's go back to Azure boards. Regardless of the process template you've selected, the main sections are the same. Work items, boards, backlogs, sprints, and queries. Work items is just a flat list of all the work items you have created, regardless of the type, status, area, etc. In fact, you can see I have tasks, product backlog items, features, and even bugs in here. You can, of course, filter the list by keywords or by the different fields. Backlogs and boards are strictly correlated in the sense that they show the same work items, but in a different representation. Boards show epics, features, and backlog items in Scrum or user stories if you're using the Agile template in a Kanban style view, while backlogs shows the same, but in a hierarchical list that allows you to navigate the dependencies between the work items, even down to the tasks and bugs. Sprints on the other side, let you visualize and plan your iterations in a Kanban-like view for tasks and bugs still keeping their relationship with their parent backlog items visible, as you can see on the left. Here you can move the items via drag and drop to track the work done by your team, or of course, your team can do that. And this can be even automated. And finally, the Queries tab allows you to navigate the data about the work items using either predefined queries or custom ones. You can specify conditions and clauses and manipulate the data for your own use. And everything we've seen is configurable and customizable. Let's now quickly see how we can create a new work item. The quick way to create any work item is to go to the work item list, click on new work item and select the type of the work item we want to create. This is the easiest way, but it's not the most efficient. In fact, you want to create hierarchy between your work items to track the work properly. So let's say, for example, you want to create a new task to assign to a developer. That task will most likely be related to a product backlog item, which in turn will be related to a feature. In a scenario like this, what you probably want to do is go into the Backlogs tab, locate and expand the feature and the backlog item your new task will be part of, and here click on the Create Work Item button, which is the one with the plus at the left of the list, and this will give you the selection of only the work item times you can create at that level here, Tasks and Bug. In fact, if I were to click on the plus button near a feature, you would see that it will create a backlog item directly because it's the only work item type that is allowed in a feature. Going back to our task, when creating it, we will need to insert all the information the person will need to execute it, and then we can assign the task to a specific person or let the team free to pick it up. Finally, we should assign the work item to an iteration or sprint so the team knows when to execute it. And since I've assigned it to the current sprint, I can go to the sprint tab and under my backlog item, I will now see the new task. And also in this case, Teams can customize the fields in a work item to ensure the proper data is captured. Let me know in the comment section below if you have any questions about the sections we've covered and also if you want me to go deeper in any of those features I mentioned before. And finally, remember to subscribe, like and go to coderdave.io slash newsletter so you can participate into the giveaway. Finally, check out this video over here in which I cover how you can integrate Azure Boards and GitHub. But that's it for me. Thanks so much for watching. I really hope you enjoyed it. Hit the like button below, subscribe if you haven't already, and I see you in the next video here at Coded Dave.